Join Kids Hat Family. Bye, Melly. I will call you later. Hey, Tofu. How was your day? Oh, it was such a fun day, Tia. You know that new boy who has joined my class, Kate? Yes. The one whom all the teachers like so much? Well, not anymore. They don't. What do you mean, Tofu? Some of us got together and got her into real trouble with the teachers. The teachers think it was all her fault. Tofu, that's horrible. How could you? Relax, Tia. No one will ever know. I am very disappointed with you, Tofu. But you know what? Evil can never win. What are you talking about, Tia? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Once upon a time, there lived a king with his wife. Sadly, they had no children. This made the queen very sad. On a winter day, when it was snowing heavily, the queen sat in her garden and prayed with all her heart to have a daughter as beautiful as the winter, fair as snow and with lips as red as the last red rose that bloomed in the garden. Her prayers were answered a year later when she gave birth to a daughter just as she wanted. But the childbirth was so difficult for the queen that she died during it. Leaving behind the king and their daughter Snow White. As time passed, the princess started asking for her mother. Father, where is mother? Why don't I have a mother? Soon you will have one, my princess. The word spread in the kingdom that the king had decided to remarry. Families who had daughters of marriageable age started trying to impress the king, but no maiden could win his heart. Till one day, an enchanting woman showed up alone at the palace. The king fell in love with her immediately and they were married soon. My queen, this whole palace is yours. It is your own home. Go where you like. Ask for whatever you want. Thank you, kind king. But all I need is a room to store my mirror that I have brought with me. Yes, I noticed that all you have brought is that large round mirror. I am happy as long as you are happy, dear. Oh, you know what will make me truly happy? What is it? Your death. The queen was actually an evil witch who had pretended to be nice so that the king would marry her. Her true motive was to have a kingdom of her own. She had only one other desire, to be the fairest woman in the world. Every day, she would stand in front of her mirror, which had magical powers, and ask it the same question. 
mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? It is you, O oh Queen. This went on for many years. The Queen ruled the kingdom without any real love for its people. The people suffered under her reign, but no one dared say anything because they knew that the Queen was a witch. The Princess Snow White also had a similar fate. The Queen did not even bother to look at her even once and left her alone and lonely. Till it was Snow White's 16th birthday. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Snow White. No! How dare you say that? I do not lie, Queen. She must die! She must die! God, come in! One of her most trusted guards came in. Take Snow White and kill her now! But my queen, she is just a child. Do as you are told. Yes, my queen. Afraid of the queen's anger, the guard took Snow White deep into the jungle to kill her. But as he raised his sword to kill her, he looked into her blue eyes and lost his courage to strike. He just left her there and ran. Lost, Snow White wandered deeper into the jungle. There, she came across a tiny cottage. She decided to enter it. Look at this tiny home. I wonder who lives here. She saw seven tiny beds. A dining table with seven small chairs and a kitchen which had seven plates and tumblers. There is seven of everything here. I think seven people live here. But why is everything so small and tiny? Snow White was just looking around when seven dwarfs entered the house. It was their home. Who are you? Oh, hello. I didn't hear you come in. My name is Snow White. I am the princess. The princess? We saw a royal guard kill a roe deer and pull its heart out. Yes, and he was mumbling to himself that he will tell the queen that he had killed the princess and brought her heart for the queen. Yes, the Queen's guard brought me here. I think he wanted to kill me, but ran away, leaving me alone. Don't worry, Princess. You can stay here with us. That way, you will be safe. Oh, thank you so much. Snow White started staying with the Dwarf Brothers. In the day, they would go out into the jungle to hunt and earn money. While Snow White would stay home and cook for them and take care of their house. They all lived happily together. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Snow White. 
You are lying to me because I didn't visit you since you said this the last time. I cannot lie when you ask me something. But Snow White is dead. Snow White is alive. Your God lied to you. That God will die and so will Snow White. Using her magic, the queen disguised herself as an old woman. She even made the mirror tell her where Snow White lived now. As she entered into the jungle, she saw Snow White filling a jar with water from a stream. I am very thirsty. Please give me some water. Yes, yes. Here, please, have as much as you want. Thank you, dear girl. Please take the apple as a thank you from me. The apple looked so beautiful and tempting that Snow White just couldn't say no to it. She took it from the old woman, but she didn't know that the queen had poisoned the apple. As soon as she took one bite of the apple, the poison affected her. She fell down, stopped breathing and had no heartbeat. The queen became very happy and rejoiced as she made her way back to the castle. But she was too distracted by her joy and fell into quicksand. With no one to help, she sank and died. Meanwhile, the dwarfs came home and saw Snow White lying there dead. They were heartbroken. Who did that to her? I think the queen found out about her. Look at that black half-eaten apple. I don't want to let go of her. Let us keep her in a glass box. And so the dwarfs kept her in the glass box in the garden near their home. Every day they would keep a red rose on her box. One day, a young prince came into the forest. There he saw the seven dwarfs sitting by Snow White. He got down from his horse and went to see. His eyes fell on Snow White who was in the box. Who is she? What has happened to her? When the dwarfs had finished telling him everything, the prince was sad too. I am in love with her. I wish I had a chance to meet her once. Now all I want to do is kiss her. And so the prince lifted the lid of the glass box and kissed Snow White. As soon as he kissed her, Snow White opened her eyes. The curse of the poisoned apple had been broken. My princess, you are alive. Your love woke me up, dear prince. Encouraged by the prince's support, Snow White decided to go back to her kingdom and face the queen. When she reached there, she found out that the queen was dead and the kingdom was joyous to have the princess back. Snow White took over the throne with the prince by her side and even invited the dwarfs to come in the castle and stay with them. 
with her return the kingdom was joyous once again tia can you please take me to kate's house i have to apologize to her right away i think i have been evil to her good decision tofu yes i will take you there come on let's go thanks tia and i promise tomorrow i will tell the teachers the truth too thanks tia for helping me pick these easter eggs for joe's party you're most welcome tofu could you help me with one more thing please sure what is it Joe has invited me for the Easter celebration at his home, but I feel I don't know a lot about Easter. Do you think you could tell me something about it? Of course, Tofu, I will. Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ after his crucifixion. About 2000 years ago, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. There, he started preaching the people the right and the wrong they were doing. He performed many miracles too. He fed many many people on just a little bit of food. He healed the sick and even brought back the dead to life. He was loved and followed by many many people. But there were some others who felt threatened by the popularity he was gaining. These people got together with Judas Iscariot, a disciple of Jesus, who too was jealous of all the love that he was receiving. Judas agreed to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. One night, Jesus sat down with his disciples to have a meal. He told his friends that the next day he would leave them all and join his father in heaven as one amongst them had already taken money to betray him at this point judas left them all and walked away later judas came back with the priest's men who took him away The Jewish leaders asked him if he was the son of God. When Jesus said yes, the Jewish leaders said this was an insult to God and he should be punished. Eventually, on Friday, Jesus was nailed to a cross through his hands and feet, and the cross was raised to stand. Jesus stayed nailed to the cross till night when he finally died. This day came to be known as Good Friday. Friends of Jesus and Mary, his mother, brought him down from the cross and laid him in a cave and made it his tomb. They sealed the cave with a rock. Mary Magdalene, a friend of Jesus, visited his tomb 2 days later on a Sunday. But the tomb was open and Jesus' body was not there. When Jesus' mother found out about it, she broke down crying. 
a stranger came to her then and told her that her son was now with the Lord. She asked him how he knew this. The man told her that he was Jesus. He had risen from the dead. Mary overjoyed to know this. She spread the word of Jesus' resurrection on this day came to be celebrated as Easter Sunday. Wow, Tia! Thanks for telling me all this. All I knew about Easter was that Christians consider this as a very sacred day. Go to the church and cook good food. Don't forget the Easter eggs, Tofu. Oh yes, there are treasure hunts too, where we look for Easter eggs filled with chocolates and other yummies. Yes, you're right. You recite so many stories to me that are full of morals. But you have never recited your favorite story to me. Which one is it? <laughs> Tofu, that's true. I haven't yet recited my favorite story to you. Would you want to listen to one of my favorite stories? Yeah. Jack and the Beanstalk Once upon a time, there lived a widow with her only son, named Jack. Their times were really hard and they were living in poverty for long. Jack was too young to work and earn money. All their house furniture and other belongings were sold off to carry on with their basic daily needs. Until at last they were left with a cow who used to give milk every day and that they used to sell off in the market to buy bread. One day, the poor old cow didn't give any milk. That's when Jack suggested his mother. I think we should sell off this cow and get a good return in bargain. So Jack left to sell off the cow in the market. On the way, he met a butcher. Oh, where are you going, Jack? I'm going to the market to sell off this cow for a good bargain. Oh, why take the trouble to go that far? I have a very good deal for you. He took out five strange-looking beans from his pocket and handed them to Jack. Jack looked little hazed as to what kind of good bargain it is. Oh my God! They are so beautiful. What do you call these? Beans. Magical beans. If you plant them overnight, by the next morning, they will grow up and reach the sky. Wow! Mother would be so happy to see them. Thank you, Mr. Butcher. And off went Jack happily to his mother and showed her the magical beans. But to his disappointment, she only got angry at him and shouted. Off you go to bed right away. She threw the beans outside the kitchen window and into the backyard and went off to her bed crying and weeping. The next morning, when Jack woke up, he saw outside his window and to his surprise, he saw a great beanstalk reaching up to the sky. Oh my God! This beanstalk is so huge! I need to climb this up to see where it leads to. He climbed up and up and up till his home looked a mere spot on the ground. At last, the stalk ended and Jack found himself in a completely different place. But suddenly, a beautiful lady appeared and said, Hello Jack, you don't know me, 
but I know you and everything about you. The castle you see there belongs to a giant who stole all your father's money and killed him. Your mother had kept the secret from you to protect you. He owes you, Jack. The lady disappeared in thin air. Jack kept standing there and thinking. He surely owes me and my family. Far away, where the road ended, he could see a huge castle. He went up to the castle and knocked on the huge door. A giant woman opened the door. She looked scary and howled at Jack. What do you want? Uh, if you please, ma'am, would you kindly give me some breakfast? I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. The giant woman, though looked cruel and ugly, had a kind heart and offered Jack a huge plate of English breakfast but warned him. You must finish quickly before my giant husband comes back and eats you. Then suddenly there was a huge knock on the door and the wife picked up Jack and hid him in a huge empty kettle. As the door opened, the giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Nonsense! You're mistaken. It's the ox hide you smell. So he sat down at the table and ate the ox that his wife had served him as breakfast. After he finished, he asked his wife, Get me my money bags. He started counting his money, but he was so sleepy that he slept on the table. The whole room was roaring with his snore. Jack, taking an opportunity of this time, got out of the kettle, picked up the money bags and ran towards the door. Before the giant woke up, he climbed down the beanstalk and to his cottage and did not look back even once. He took a sigh of relief and ran to his mother. Mother, look what I got! We are rich now. The mother and the son lived quite comfortably. Till one afternoon, when his mother was away, he decided to go up to the giant's castle and see what was happening there. So he climbed up the beanstalk and reached the castle. There, standing at the door, he saw the giant's wife again. But she didn't recognize him because he was dressed impeccably this time. Uh, if you please, ma'am, he said. Will you give me some breakfast? Run away, you little boy. Last time a boy came, he stole my husband's money bags. But since she was kind-hearted, she offered Jack breakfast. At that very moment, the giant knocked on the door and quickly she hid Jack in the oven. The giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. But the giant's wife once again assured him that he is mistaken and offered him his huge breakfast to eat. After eating his food, he asked his wife, Get me my golden hen. The wife got the hen and the giant roared in his voice. Lay! 
very moment the hen laid a golden egg and Jack was left amazed with what he saw. No sooner he saw the giant slipping into his deep sleep and once again he came out of the oven, picked up the hen and ran for the door. In the meanwhile the hen began to cackle. The voice made the giant move a little but he kept sleeping. Jack climbed down the stalk and went straight to his mother and gave her the golden hen. The mother and the boy were so rich that they had money greater than even what they could spend. One day he was sitting idle. The thought of the beanstalk crossed his mind again and he decided to climb it. No sooner he was at the castle, but this time he decided not to be seen and climbed the kitchen wall of the castle and hid himself in the oven. In came the giant, roaring louder than ever. Fee, fee, fo, fum! I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I grind his bones to make my bread. But the giantess was quite sure that she had seen no little boy that morning and after grumbling a great deal, the giant sat down for breakfast. As soon as he got over with his breakfast, he called out to his wife. Bring me my harp! Sing! ordered the giant. Soon the harp started singing the most beautiful sounds ever heard and no sooner the giant fell off into his deep sleep. Jack, who was waiting for this moment, got out of the oven and climbed the table to grab the harp. But as soon as he started running off with it, the harp started shouting. Master! Master! The giant woke up just in time to catch the sight of Jack running out of the kitchen door. With a fearful roar, he saw Jack running with the harp and dashed after him. Little Jack ran as fast as he could while holding the harp tightly in his hands. The giant, taking terribly long strides, gained on Jack and he would have been caught if Giant had not slipped over a boulder. Before he could pick himself up, Jack began to climb down the beanstalk and when the Giant arrived at the edge, he was nearly halfway to the cottage. The Giant began to climb down too, but as soon as Jack saw him coming, he called out, Mother, bring an axe! The widow hurried out with the chopper. Jack had no sooner reached the ground than he cut the beanstalk right in two. Down came the giant with a terrible crash. And that, you may be sure, was the end of him. But the mother had a very important advice for Jack. Jack! What the giant did to your father was bad. But you should not have been so greedy. He reaped what he sowed. But greed is also a bad deed. Jack agreed to his mother and promised to never be greedy again. And they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! That was such an adventurous story. Yeah, Tofu! And do you know why it was my favourite story? No, tell me. The story was about a brave boy who wanted to fight against poverty and in a way he got a chance to take revenge of his father too. But in the process he forgot that harming the giant again and again was not ethical and stealing from the giant's house was also against his morals. Oh, that's quite a heavy thought for my little brain. <laughs> Let's go. We are late for dinner. Mum must be waiting.
wasting time. How come you always want to do something good for others? Tofu, what goes around comes around. If you do good, good will come back to you. And if you do bad, bad will come back to you. What do you mean? Let me tell you the story of a little boy called Pinocchio. Pinocchio Once there lived an old carpenter called Geppetto. He had no family and was quite lonely. Since he was quite poor, he would find leftover wooden logs and create something new out of them. One night, he found a large wooden log and took it home. Throughout the night, Geppetto worked on the log. carved a young boy out of it. By the time he was done with it, it was morning. My, my, what a beautiful boy I have made. I wish he had a heart. Then he could be my son and I would call him Pinocchio. A good fairy who knew that Geppetto was a very nice man overheard him and suddenly the wooden boy spoke up. Hello! Geppetto was surprised but overjoyed. He hugged Pinocchio and told him that from that day he was Geppetto's son. Geppetto arranged for Pinocchio to go to school. To buy him his books, he sold off his dear chisel. Now you can go to school like a real boy. One morning, as Pinocchio was going to school, the evil puppet master stopped him. The puppet master wanted to own Pinocchio so he could use him to earn lots of money. Hello Pinocchio. Do you want to go to the fun island? It is a wonderful, magical place where you can become a real boy. Pinocchio was overjoyed at the idea of going to fun island. He quickly started walking with the puppet master. The good fairy who had been watching over Pinocchio suddenly appeared. Seeing her, the evil puppet master ran away, leaving Pinocchio alone. Where are you going, Pinocchio? To school, good fairy. Just as Pinocchio said the lie, his wooden nose grew longer. That isn't the way to the school, Pinocchio. Afraid that he had been caught, the boy decided to lie again. It is a new route. With the second lie, Pinocchio's nose grew even longer. Now he was very sad and started crying. I am sorry. I won't go to the fun island. I will go to school. Seeing how sorry Pinocchio was, the good fairy did her magic and turned his nose into its normal size again. Pinocchio thanked her and dashed off to school. Once he reached school, he told all his friends about the fun island. All his friends decided to go and see this magical place. What they didn't know was that the magic in fun island was evil. It turned little boys into donkeys. Oh no! We are in trouble! Everybody, run from here! 
just as the boys were figuring a way out of the island, Pinocchio saw Geppetto swimming towards the island. He had been looking out for Pinocchio all day. But to Pinocchio's horror, before Geppetto could reach him, a whale swallowed him up. To save his father, Pinocchio also jumped into the sea and went straight into the whale's stomach. There he saw Geppetto. Pinocchio, my son! Father, are you okay? How will we get out of here now? Well, we must tickle the whale from inside till it throws us out. And they started tickling the whale's stomach. Soon the whale sneezed and threw both of them out. Pinocchio helped his father and all his friends to get back to the village. The good fairy had been watching him all this time. Pinocchio, I have seen what a good boy you have been. Jumping into the sea to save your father like that. Hence, I am giving you a heart and making you a real boy. Pinocchio and Geppetto were overjoyed. They hugged each other and thanked the fairy as Pinocchio really turned into a real boy. Do you still think that doing good is a waste of time, Tofu? Oh no, never, Tia. From now on, I will always do good to others. Isn't that John and his older brother? Yes, that's them. Look at that. He is really troubling his brother. Oh, I think John is in big trouble. I'm sure his brother is going to give him a big scolding. I don't think so. Why not? Didn't you see how he was troubling his brother? There is no way he's going to stop unless his brother scolds him. Don't decide on that till you've heard the story of the wind and the sun. A long time ago, the wind and the sun were just talking when the wind said something strange to the sun. You do know that I am more powerful than you, don't you? Don't be arrogant, my friend. But the wind got offended. I am not being arrogant, I am being truthful. If you don't believe me, let's have a competition right now. The sun did not want to compete with his friend, but the wind left him with no choice. Reluctantly, he agreed. Okay, my friend, let's have a competition. Just then, a young man was walking on the road below them. He was wearing a beautiful scarf and a handsome coat. See that man below? Whoever can get the scarf and the coat off him wins. Okay, wind. You go ahead first. And so the wind blew at the man. The man's scarf moved a bit and his coat front flapped a little. I was just beginning. I will show the man some more of my power now. Now the wind blew a little more strongly. 
The man's scarf and coat front started flapping more in the wind. The wind grew fiercer and blew more wildly at him. The man's scarf almost left him but he caught it and tied it around his neck properly. The wind blew at the man with all his power and anger. But it only made the man wrap his scarf and coat around him more tightly. He started feeling so cold with the wind blowing at him that he wrapped his arms around his legs and sat down by the road. The wind failed to get his scarf and coat off. I have still not lost. If my power and anger couldn't do the job, you surely won't be able to do it either. Let us see. I think you have frozen the poor man. Maybe he could use some warmth. And so the sun gently smiled a bit at the man. Immediately, the man started feeling better. He straightened up and the color returned to his cheeks. He got up and started walking his way again. Is that it? Is that all you will do? Smile at him? The son ignored his friend and smiled at the man a little bit more. The man became more comfortable and walked his way faster. Watch what happens now. Now the son gave the man an even bigger smile. As the sun's smile grew bigger, the man started feeling warmer and warmer. Finally, he could take it no more and started sweating. He slowly took his scarf off. Oh no! At last, the sun's warmth became so much for the man that he took off his coat and flung it aside. The sun had won the competition. I am sorry, I underestimated the effect of gentleness. I thought only power could make things happen in the world, but I was wrong. Oh, don't worry my friend. Why don't you blow at him gently so his sweat can vanish? The wind did so while the sun continued to smile at him lightly. The man went on his way enjoying a pleasant day. Wow Tia, that's a wonderful way to be with people. Yes, there are better ways of changing things than a show of anger and power. I'm so glad you are my elder sister, Tia. If ever I do something wrong, I know you will correct me without scolding me. Well, looks like John also has a great brother. See, he's no longer troubling his brother. We won. But why does Ron keep passing the ball to others? He's the best player on the team. He could make more goals if he just takes the ball all the way by himself. No Tofu. To win, you always need a team. 
every player is equally important on the team. Come, I will tell you a story about the importance of teamwork. Once upon a time, a girl called Dorothy lived in Kansas City. She was playing with her best friend, a dog named Toto, when a scary cyclone came their way. Dorothy called out to Toto. Toto, hurry! We have to get to the basement. But before they could reach the basement, the cyclone lifted their house up and blew it away. After some time, it fell somewhere with a thud. When Dorothy stepped out of the house, she saw the house had landed on someone. Toto, help me! Who is she? The house has landed on her! I'm so sorry! Just then, Dorothy and Toto heard people behind them rejoicing. They were the munchkins. Thank you, thank you! You have just saved us from the evil witch of the east! You have saved us all! Just then, another witch appeared. She was the good witch. Hello, Dorothy. You have done a great deed by saving all the munchkins. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you. Could you please tell me how to go back to Kansas City? That's where I used to live. I can't do that. But I think the Wizard of Oz can help you with that. Just follow the yellow brick road. It will lead you straight to him. But before you go, take these red slippers that the evil witch of the east had. You might need them. Dorothy thanked the good witch, took the slippers and made her way on the yellow brick road with Toto. She had only walked a bit when she came across a scarecrow. Hello, I am the scarecrow. I have everything I want except a brain. My head is only filled with hay. Hello, scarecrow. I am going to the Wizard of Oz. Why don't you come with me? He might be able to help you. And so Dorothy was joined by the scarecrow. They had walked a few miles when they met the tin woodcutter. I want a heart. When my maker made me, he gave me everything but forgot to give me a heart. I wish he hadn't forgotten that. We are going to the Wizard of Oz. We are going to ask him for a way for Dorothy to get back to her home and for brains for me. Why don't you come with us? And so the tin woodcutter also joined them. They had walked for some time when they heard Toto barking. They turned around to see that a lion had attacked Toto. Get away from my dog, you nasty lion! The lion whimpered and ran away to a corner. Oh no! 
You aren't a brave lion at all, are you? No, I have no courage. I wish I had some. We are going to the Wizard of Oz. We will ask him for a brain for the scarecrow, a way for Dorothy to get back home, and a heart for me. Come with us. We will ask him for courage for you. The lion agreed and they all continued on the yellow brick road. They kept following the road and reached the Emerald City. They knocked on its big gates. A guard appeared. The wizard doesn't meet anyone, but he has agreed to meet all of you. And so all the friends went to meet the wizard. They told him how and why they had come to meet him. Thank you, Dorothy, for freeing the lands from the evil witch of the East. But I will grant all your wishes when you free us from the evil witch of the West too. The friends agreed to the wizard's terms and left to find the evil witch of the West. But the evil witch of the West had heard about what had happened to the evil witch of the East. She also knew about Dorothy and her friends plan to kill her. She planned an attack on them. She sent a pack of her scariest wolves to stop them. The tin woodcutter stepped forward. This is a job for me. Everyone, stay back. The woodcutter hacked at the wolves with his axe till they all ran away. The wolves had just left when the skies became dark and many crows started coming down to peck at them all. This time, the scarecrow stepped forward and scared all the crows away. Next, the evil witch sent flying monkeys. Before anyone could do anything, the monkeys grabbed them all and took them to the evil witch's castle. So, you've come to kill me, huh? How will you do that? The woodcutter is lying in a pile over the stones. I have emptied the scarecrow and strapped the cowardly lion to pull my cocks. Oh, you are so evil! What a horrible person you are! Saying so, Dorothy grabbed the bucket of water that was lying there and threw the water at the witch. Oh no! You threw water over me? I am going to shrink and melt! Help me! I'm melting! Oh my god! I'm melting! Help me! And so the evil witch of the west melted away. As that happened, all her slaves became free. They repaired the woodcutter, filled the scarecrow with hay and released the lion. Dorothy and her friends went back to the Emerald City.
the wizard of oz welcomed them and granted the wishes of the scarecrow the woodcutter and the lion what about my wish how will i get back home you don't need me for that you had the power all along just click your heels together thrice and tell the slippers where you want to go they will take you there Though Dorothy was excited to go home, she was sad to leave her friends. She said a tearful goodbye to them. Then she picked up Toto in her arms and clicked her heels together three times and told her slippers to take her home. So you see Tofu? If all the friends hadn't worked together, they would have not been able to defeat the evil witch of the West. Hmm. Yes, Tia. I now understand the importance of a team. Tofu, wolves are known to be clever and cunning. My childhood memories with wolves are quite interesting, especially the story of the wolf and the seven little goats. The wolf and the seven little goats? Wow! I haven't heard that one. Tell me the story, Tia. The wolf and the seven little goats. Once upon a time there lived a mama goat and her seven little kids. This was a happy little home. All the seven little kids used to play in the meadows, into the wild with the butterflies and birds singing along. Their days used to go in complete harmony and bliss. Until one day a big black wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow. Ha ha ha! Such an easy treat they are for me. I haven't eaten since ages. I'm sure these would make delicious lamb chops for my dinner tonight. He waited for the moment when the mother goat would leave her kids alone. patiently hiding in the bushes Children I'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you I'll be back by evening Just make sure you remain conscious of this big bad wolf But mommy how would we know if it's not you The wretched wolf can easily be recognized with his hoarse voice and black feet don't open the door or else you little ones would get into danger don't worry mummy we would take care of ourselves the mother goat went off to the market and the kids made doubly sure with the locks on the door after making sure that they are safe in their little home off they went to play When suddenly there was a knock on the door. Hello my children, open the door. Your mother is back. Hearing the voice, the youngest one scampered to the door. Mommy, mommy, she's back. In no time, the eldest one ran to catch his little sibling. No, it's not our mommy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. And then, looking at the door, the eldest kid shouted back saying, "Go away, you big bad wolf! A mother doesn't have such a harsh voice." Hearing this, the wolf got annoyed and ran to get a box of chalk. 
as he had heard that this would make his voice as soft as that of a baby. But kids, you shouldn't do this at any cost as this would only make your tummy ache badly. So off he went and cut off the whole box of chalk. Knocking on the door again, he said, Hello kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads and ginger ale. Oh, that sounds like a mother. Should we open the door now? But look down there. A mother has not got black feet. This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother has not got black feet, but beautiful white feet. Hearing this, the wolf ran to the miller and jumped into the mountain of white dough. He was all white from head to toe. Running back to the house, he knocked again and said, Kids, your mother is back. Open the dough. That sounds like a mother and also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to the door and opened it. But just to see who was standing there, the big bad wolf gave a loud laugh and brushed off his white powder. Hello kids, are you ready to become my feast tonight? The kids ran here and there to save their lives. One went inside the kettle, the other in the oven. One looked for a place under the bed and the other tried saving itself by hiding in the pot. The youngest one was so tiny that he managed to hide himself inside the clock case. The wolf, having no mercy, started taking them out from their hidings. One by one, he rolled them in a ball and gulped them up. Ah, there goes the first one. Oh, the second one is under the bed. Here you go. In no time, he ate all the kids except for the youngest one who was hiding in the clock case. With his tummy full, he burped and left the home. When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open and waited for the biggest nightmare that might have come true. The house was all upside down. The crockery was broken. The curtains were torn. The chair was broken and the kids were nowhere to be found. She cried for them. <laughs> children! Oh children! Where are you? At that very moment, the youngest one came out of the clock case and hugged his mother crying and howling. Oh mother, the bad wolf disguised us by sounding and looking like you. He ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry, let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled that he slept off in a meadow near the house itself. His snores were so loud that even the branches of the tree were shuddering. The mother goat very quietly went near him and asked her youngest kid to get scissors thread and a needle. Off he went to get them. The mother goat very quietly slit open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. They then filled up his tummy with stones as big as balls and then she stitched the tummy with the thread and the needle. The 
The wolf had such a huge feast after so long and he slept all night. In the morning when he got up, he was so thirsty that he tried running to the well. But his belly was so heavy that he could hardly walk. He picked up his belly and managed to reach the well. But the moment he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight and fell in the well. The kids were looking at all of this from their window and shouted happily. Mommy, mommy, the wolf has died. Now we can play freely outside without any fear. And they lived happily ever after. Now that was one cunning wolf. But Tofu, if you be bad to others, bad happens to you too. Always remember that. Yeah, Tia. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.